If you're connecting to an SQL, a live SQL database using Power BI or using Power Query in Excel, and if the database is a live database as in it's continuously being updated, if you don't use the no lock option, you're gonna create deadlocks within that database. Now, I've done a lot of searches across Google to try and find a quick solution to adding, automatically adding no lock to an SQL query when you're writing it with the query editor in Power BI or in Power Query. And I can't really find a fairly quick solution. Now, the only way that I have found around this is to write a query using SQL. Now, I know many Power BI users and many Excel users don't know SQL. I don't know SQL. And I have had to ask people for help on writing some of my queries, but I've also done a lot of research. And by now, I've written nearly all of my queries through SQL just to get the data. Now, I've continued to do a lot of the transformations in the Power BI, in the uh, query editor interface. So basically, by using the M language in Power BI or in Excel. But what I have found is the more of the filtering that I do using the Power BI query, the faster, the more efficient the query actually is. So what I'm going to show you today is how I use Power BI to connect to the Steam SQL database. Now the Steam SQL database is a database for the blockchain, the Steamat blockchain. And this, if you don't know, is a social media platform where people are blogging and people are talking and people are posting and people can be rewarded with cryptocurrency with cryptocurrency steam with upvotes if you haven't been on steam and i would recommend that you check it out and also have a look at my profile and connect with me but back to the point in hand what i want to show you today is some neat tricks on how you can connect to this database using sql so that you don't deadlock your databases. And this can be applied to any live SQL database that you're connecting with Power BI or with Excel. So let's hop over now to Power BI and have a look at this, and I will show you some examples. Here we are now in Power BI. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to connect to our data source. So we're gonna say get data and we're gonna to connect to an SQL server. Now, this is the screen that traditionally I would enter in the server name and I would import the data. And when you select import here, there's no no lock query actually added. But what it will do is allow you to go down through the tables and have, have a look at the preview to see what columns you need from each table or even just to grab the name of the tables. But we're not gonna connect that way because by connecting that way, we're not adding a no lock query. So once you have the details and you know where, what tables and what columns it is that you need, instead of writing the query that way, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna connect the same way but this time we need to add a database. And the database is DB Steam. After this, we need to go to our advanced editor. And it's the advanced editor is where we enter our SQL query. Now the query that I'm going to write, the first query that I'm going to write is going to be a very simple query. I want to connect to the transfers table. And I, want see, and I want to see transfers that have been made from either, let's say, my account or the Steemit BC account. So let me put in the query and then I'll explain it to you. The first thing is it says select. And we're going to select and we're going to put in a star because the select here is going to be the column names that you want to pull in from the table. And in this situation, I want to pull in all of the column names. So to do this, you add a star. 
Next, it's asking you where do you want to pull it from? So which table do you want to pull it from? So from is saying which table, and here's my table name, TX transfers. After this, in brackets and in caps, I have no lock, and that's adding your no lock query. Now, before we look at the next line, I'm going to take this out for a second. If I ran this query now, which I will do just to show you, so this is now going to all of the transfers table because I haven't put any filters on. Now, that's not what I want to do, but I've said okay and it's brought me into the query editor. But I want to edit this query a little more. So if we click on this icon over here beside the source, it'll bring us back up our server database. And now I want to filter this table. I want to filter it where the from column contains my account or the Steemit BC account. Now I want you to note here something, and this I got stuck on this and I had to reach out to a fellow person on Steemit to ask for help. The from column, you can see the from column here. I have this from column in square brackets. This is the name of the column, and the reason I have this in square brackets, and you'll see in later queries, I don't always have it in square brackets. We have a reserved word in SQL, and the reserved word is from, because you're pulling it from a particular table. And we can't have a column name and a reserved word the same. So here I need to put the column name in square brackets. So what I'm saying here is select all of the columns from the, trans the TX transfer tables where the from column has my account and the steam at BC account. Now I can select OK and it'll run the query and we'll see the froms have changed and my account and the steam at BC account are here. We can now go ahead and we can continue then with our transformations that we would have previously carried out when we were connecting to the database. But now what we've done is we've connected using no lock and we've also filtered it to certain elements of the from. And I wanted to show you that from because of the way the word from is reserved. Now, with this particular database as well, everything, all the timestamps are in date and time format. And this is another query that I got stuck on that I needed to research into a little bit. So I'm going to show you a second query now of how to deal with this timestamp and with this time formatting. So I have went to a new source and I've put in the server name and the database name and now I'm going to put in my query. Now this time the query is saying select and we have a star. So that means we're selecting all of the columns in the table and we're selecting it from the comments table and we're adding no lock. After this, we're then saying where. So we're now adding our filters. And we want to pull in the author. And in this case, we're only using one author. So we can see we only have one in there. So where the author is the Steam BC account. And because we're applying more filters. So this time in the comments table, the date that we want to look at is called created. And we want to look at the create a date where it's greater than or equal to. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because of the data type in that particular column. You need to convert this. So use convert and say date time. And then in your commas, we have the date. Now the date format is the month, then the date, and then the year. And then I have a second date to close it off, so I want it the, to select between two dates, so it's greater than or equal to that date. And the created date is also less than, and again we wish to convert this date and time into the particular date and time. Now all other queries without joins or anything complicated work as simple as this. And 
once you get the data into Power BI, I'm going to run that query and show you that query. But once you get the data into Power BI, you can then continue with your transformations and your mashups and your merges within here. So you really don't need to know complex SQL to be able to run a no lock query and filter the data set down into the data that you need. Now let's just see what this has pulled back. So it's pulled back from the comments table, the author, the all the basically all the columns that have been available in that data set, but just for that author and also just be between the created date of the month of October 2017 is basically what I selected. If you had connected by just putting in the server name and putting in the passwords and then doing all of the steps in Power BI, I'm going to show you now how you can change all them queries. So first of all, you'll need to go to your source. Actually, first of all, let me show you the advanced editor and what the advanced editor had done. So this is the M query language. And basically, it's gone to the source, and then it's gone to the database, and then it's gone to the comments table, and then it's carried out all of the different steps. So what we're going to do is we are going to change this query. And I am going to put our query in. So basically, I'm only pulling, I'm pulling everything from the comments table. Now, I have to put in my database, and I'm going to select OK. Now, this will run the query. It's ran into the database. And you can see I have no filters here because I had done all my filtering through the rest of this table. But if we click into the next step, we're going to have a problem. So what we need to do now is we need to go to our advanced editor and we need to ups update this slightly. So the second two rows in the query editor is selecting the database and the comments table. We need to delete this. Now we have our next step, which is our filtered rows. That would be this step here. The problem with this step now is that it's looking for this DBO comments, and we don't have DBO comments anymore. What we now have is source. So you need to copy your source and change your source to your, your DB comments to source. And then when you select done, your table will update and your applied steps will all be correct. So sh just to show you the steps there again, what I did, we removed the second two rows that were in this piece of code. And then we changed the database that was in the fourth row, that's now the second row, from the database name to the source. And we selected done. So that's it. That's how I connect Power BI to a live SQL database and overcome the no lock query problem without knowing in depth SQL. I can still do all of my transformations through the Power BI interface and through the query editor in Power BI, and it doesn't cause any problems. But the more you can filter down in your SQL query, the faster things will be for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Goodbye now.